All right, y'all. Uh, we are live now. Hopefully, we won't have any technical difficulties. Everything is working good so far. And welcome everybody watching. I see a lot of people's already in the chat, and good to see every one of you. And we are here with special guest tonight, um, Asymmetrical Preparedness. So I'll let you give a little introduction, but most of the folks here probably already know you anyway. I'm sorry, I have to. There we go. I had to mute my laptop. I got you. Hey, yeah. So my name is Michael, Asymmetrical Preparedness. Um, started the channel just under, under just under two years ago, I think, about a year and a half maybe. Um, into preparedness, into spreading the love, into empowering others and uh, growing the community and sharing what knowledge I do have. Yeah, you definitely have a lot, and um, especially over on Patreon, you know, a lot of good stuff over there. If, if anybody here hasn't checked that out, I recommend you do so. That's where a lot more of the fun tactical stuff lives. Yeah, that's where a lot of the stuff that I have, my main experience in is over mm -hmm. there. <laughs> all the security stuff, all the tactical stuff, all that, yeah. To me, that's the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely so, but I appreciate you coming on here and hanging out, and like I told you before, I appreciate the shout outs and things like that, uh, you know, helping me to grow the channel, and hopefully I can help you grow yours some too. I really do think that your channel has been suppressed a lot, because, you know, I really think you ought to have a lot more than 14,000. Yeah, it's been, what, about at least six, maybe eight or nine months that mm -hmm. they've been hardcore unsubscribing, not yeah. showing my videos and people's feeds, just try shutting me down, which it seems mm -hmm. either, either I'm doing a better job. People are doing a better job of helping me or they kind of, kind of stopped doing it because the mm -hmm. growth recently over the last four or five ish days, maybe a week or two has been a lot better. It has been a lot more steady. Um, yeah, but yeah, they definitely shut me down for a while. And uh, it's mm. been rough and it's hard. I don't do this for subscriber account, but mm -hmm. you know, as, as a content creator, watching your subscriber account increase is very motivating. Mm -hmm. And whenever it slows, yeah. it's kind of, it kind of brings you down and it, you know, keep, it's just like frustrating, I guess. Yeah. And a lot of times, like you said, when, uh, you know, I'm a smaller channel, so I'm still in the, you know, single digits at times and everything. But when you'll go, for some reason, you'll go, you know, a week and you'll pick up maybe five new subscribers and then you'll go another week and you'll lose eight and then it'll pop back up, up and down constantly. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it kind of makes you wonder, it's like, you know, hey, is, are people unsubscribing or is it just, you know, YouTube type of thing? I think, yeah, I think for the most part, it's it's YouTube because everybody I talk to, nobody really unsubscribes unless, mm -hmm. you know, something happens like you say something like really controversial or where you could possibly offend a certain, you know, demographic, mm -hmm. meaning like a faith. And that's like we were talking about the pre-show, prepper community. It's important yeah. that we remain drama free and that we work together as a team. And speaking mm -hmm. of that, every, anybody that's on here, subscribe to this guy. If you're not <laughs> subscribed to this, to Six Shooter, you got to subscribe. Seriously. I appreciate um, it. Because, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about growing the community. And like I said, speaking with everybody, mm -hmm. I don't really hear anybody talking about unsubscribing really ever. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's. Maybe every once in a while, rare while, you know, but I, I think it's it's pretty much the the platform. Yeah. All right. It's good to see everybody in here. Roman Prepper and Reverend Orville Gregory. That's a buddy of mine. And Jennifer Cruz is good to see you. You said it was your first live stream. I'm glad you were able to make it in here. But yeah, if I remember right. I think I was unsubscribed to you at one point and I had to sub Probably. back. <laughs> yeah. And I know uh, Orville here, he's got a channel too. And back when he had like 20 or 30 subscribers, you know, I pulled his channel up one day and I was unsubscribed from him. And, you know, that's, 
that's definitely got to be YouTube. And that's kind of when it made me think of my own channel. And it's like, hey, if they'll mess with a channel down to like 20 and 30 subscribers, you know, they'll they'll definitely, you know, come after me, too. So it's uh, it is what it is. Uh, I think what Bear yeah. says all the time is their sandbox. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't necessarily know why they do it, because it's not it's not just prepper channels. It's not just mm -hmm. conservative channels. I mean, um, my oldest daughter has a uh, has a business of OPSEC. I'm not really going to that, but um, she's had people unsubscribe to her and other people in that business area. There's nothing to do. There's zero controversy for what they do. Yeah. So, and it's weird because I don't know why they would unsubscribe people because the more people subscribe, the more people are viewing, the more people, more um, ads get watched. Mm -hmm. So the more they get paid. So it yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah, that is true. I've seen more than just prepper channels uh, with that same issue, you know, even bigger channels with a million subscribers and things, you know. But yeah, I guess it is what it is. We just do the best we can. And um, like I said, the more uh, community we have and the more united we are, the, the better chance we have of, you know, coming against the censorship really and the suppression and yeah. everything shadow bans stuff like that plus the more we are out there and the more we grow the more our videos will be seen by more people so we can introduce more people to the idea of preparedness and that's that's mm -hmm. big for me um speaking of that you know i see some people talking about like um jennifer cruz here has 61 subscribers any of you guys out there that have a channel or know of somebody that has a channel that wants help growing it, email me at asymmetricalpreparedness at gmail.com. And I will go, I will subscribe, I will help you with the view time. Um, and I'll probably mention you in videos and or do live streams with you, whatever. I don't care how small your channel is. I don't care if you have zero subscribers. I'll mm -hmm. live stream with anybody. I don't mm -hmm. care. I don't do this. I'm not an ego maniac. I, I want to help everybody out. So let me know. I'll, I'll, tr I'll do my best to hook anybody up, try to help anybody out. Um, people have helped me out. We were talking... Um, uh, before the video, before we went live, um, I've definitely got my help and, uh, you know, thousands of subscribers worth of help. So yeah, I'm very blessed. And, you know, I, I believe in spreading the love. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I don't know. You can try to share your links or get a moderator in here to share your links, but I've seen a lot of live streams now that, when mods try to share links in there, then YouTube deletes it. So, you know, anybody's yeah, got that's... a channel, um, if you can try to do that or uh, get a moderator to find your channel and share them, you know, you're welcome to do that. And, yeah, we're definitely definitely about building the community. Um, once I get to a 1,000 and be able to do written posts and uh, a few more things like that, then I'll be able to promote some of the smaller ones as well better than than making a video a small short video talking about it and putting the link in the description. You know, it may or may not get mm -hmm. seen. Where, you know, being able to do a uh, written post is uh, going to help with that a lot. But yeah, yeah. Old Rev here, yeah. I got him uh, watching your videos a while back. Okay. Oh, all right. I see. Mm -hmm. cool yeah that's one thing there's a lot of great content out there there's a lot of different channels that have different ways of going about it i think it's really cool some are a lot more polished um i've never been the polished type or the pc type i'm just kind of like who i am how i am and i i actually recently you know figured out how to edit not really edit but clip things together mm -hmm which makes it way easier to do videos. Oh, yeah, it so, definitely uh, yeah. does. I'm really glad I figured that out. Instead of having to sit down and say, okay, I got to have 15, 20, 30 minutes to sit here and just talk to the camera, I can mm -hmm. show a lot more and it's a lot more interactive and stuff like that. So I think that's that's pretty cool too. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different ways to go about it. Yeah. Maybe stop. Hey, uh, American Prepper, good to see you in here. Um I don't know if you've uh, seen him or not, but he's got a smaller channel too. 
Um, he he had a channel a while back and didn't like the way it was going and deleted it and started over. But this is his new channel here. He's a pretty cool dude and got some good content and stuff up too. Sorry, I was just talking to my oh, four-year-old. You yeah, you're good. <laughs> She wanted to uh, t t turn the laptop a little bit so she can watch. It's lag. It's it must be in slow mode or whatever that is because it's uh, um, it's a little bit behind where we actually are. <laughs> yeah, um, it's actually not in slow mode. This is normal, but for some reason, you know, even when if I pull it up on my phone and watch at the same time, it's got a lag time on it. Okay. I don't know why, but it, it does. But it's pretty weird. Well, but I yeah. figured I, I, I attributed it probably to my um, my rural high speed internet. That's not <laughs> because yeah. my laptop my laptop's on my Wi Fi. My phone is just running data, mm -hmm. which actually works better. I feel you on that. Um, what I've got here, I've got Verizon uh, for my phone, and then I've got a uh, just a jetpack. And, you know, that's all my internet consists of is just the phone and the same company's little uh, jetpack there. It works good sometimes. Sometimes it's not so good. And like I said, I have to revert back to the data on the phone then. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I don't know why, but every time me and Rev try to stream together, one or the other of us always has technical difficulties. But Hey, I guess that's life. I'm not real tech savvy either. Sorry, answering a question. Somebody's asking me what my workout routine is. Um, mm. Oh, here, I'll just, I'll leave that on chat. But uh, right now, see, prior to COVID, um, I was, man, I was in really good shape. I was working at the gym uh, hour to two hours every single day. I had a lot more muscle mass than I do now. I was pretty ripped, pretty shredded. And mm -hmm. uh, then the gyms closed down, stopped going to that. Um, so basically, I haven't gone back to the gym because they're not open yet here. But what I do is, you know, active, busy lifestyle. And then um, do body weight exercises like military type workouts, push ups, sit ups, crunches, pull ups, um, you know, some, some um, dumbbells stuff like that, but not really a set workout routine right now. I mean, I've mm. lost a lot. I've lost a lot of muscle mass. It's really frustrating after working for, you know, two years to build that, that body. I was actually getting to the point where I was thinking about competing in some, um, natural bodybuilding competitions. Mm. Um, and then that happened and that went out the window now. So I don't <laughs> know what's, especially with my, my, with my age group, um, and with the body fat I had is, is as shredded as I was, I looking at like past winners of competitions, I actually probably would have, would have done really well. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I said, that's, that's ancient history now. <laughs> yeah. So basically, yeah, just, uh, functional fitness is, is my mm -hmm. best advice to anybody, you know, rock, walk, hike, run, bike, do, do whatever the key to fitness is do what you enjoy. Oh, sorry, you wanted to say hi. Do what you enjoy <laughs> because if you don't enjoy it, you won't stick to it. So mm -hmm. that, that's the biggest thing. I enjoyed weights. A lot of people don't enjoy weights. Um, but, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. So um, I do need to get back into more of a regular um, routine. But just doing things, uh, you know, cardio type stuff. Um, stuff kind of exercise you can do anywhere um, mm -hmm. is what I advocate mainly just because um, it's it's much more realistic you don't have to go to the gym you don't have to buy a bunch of fancy stuff you don't I mean my wife's a certified uh, master personal trainer and um, I know all about working out workout routines and all this stuff like that um, and you don't need a bunch of fancy stuff This yeah. is Gunner, by the way. This is Gunner, our new. We've had about a week now. He's about a year That's old. Cool. He's, he's going to be our new mouser. That'll he work. Has the, the most interesting um, um, personality we've <laughs> I've ever seen in a cat, though. He is so cool.
We got one of your uh, subscribers in here. Awesome. Subscribe to this guy. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it, but yeah, I've been following you for, I don't know, probably a year or over or something like that, but definitely so. Um, you know, every time I've messaged you in one way or another, you always commented back and different things like that. And, you know, one thing I like watching, you know, people like you and John at Prepper Nation is, you know, the whole time I've been following you, you've been the same guy, regardless of how many subs you got or, you know, whatever's going on, you're the same person. And I really enjoy that genuineness. Oh, yeah, and I will be. It doesn't matter if I have a million subscribers or 20. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I don't like people. I don't like fake people. That's one of my yeah. pet peeves. <laughs> Definitely so. But, yeah, um, like I said, most everybody probably already knows you in here, but uh, you want to share how you got started prepping? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, um pretty much started like Y2K and that was uh, basically my concern wasn't about the computers at all. I didn't think that. I just felt that maybe people do stupid things sometimes and they act, yeah. you know, they may cause some problems. So that's what I thought might happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we started setting aside some stuff, food storage, stuff like that. I didn't know anything about preparedness at the time. Um, but growing up watching, you know, my grandma, my grandparents had a, um, a root cellar, you know, they always had a bunch of stuff. Um, sorry, but, oh, <laughs> shoot, I dropped it. My, uh, little princess wanted me to show you guys this little sh shiny thing she had, but sorry, <laughs> baby. Um, <laughs> oh, it was uh, okay. All right, baby girl. Thank you. You're being nice and quiet for daddy. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, and then it was, you know, it was kind of a couple years, you know, where we kind of added to a little bit, you know, but it wasn't really a big thing until, um, I can't even remember where, but I really remember it picking up big time steam, um, Obama election, mm -hmm. and uh, just seeing, or here, sorry. Hmm. That's that's what she wanted me to show you guys. It's a little sparkly thing from her ballet dress. That's cool. <laughs> I like that. Sorry, but uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, and the Obama thing was. I mean, I, I I could care less what what um what what color. It wasn't anything about color of his skin, yeah. anything like that. What it was about was the fact that um I felt that he could and might go after things that I care about. Um, AKA constitutional things. Um, and he could have, honestly, he could have been a lot worse than he was. He wasn't as oh, bad yeah. as I thought he, he wasn't as bad as I thought he was going to be. Um, we're currently in the situation a lot worse. Than, I, I would trade back. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but in today's times, he probably would be this bad. It's just times yeah. were a little bit different there. He couldn't push as far. Um, yeah. but yeah, so that's when I really started picking it up and that's, I guess, when I became a, really a prepper. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it, you know, military, oh, also military experience, you know, all the various countries I've been to around the world, different continents, seeing, um, people in need, seeing people suffering, seeing people starving, seeing people, um, in oppressive governments and in bad situations, um, you know, Venezuela type things. Um, yeah, just not good. And I knew that, I mean, yeah, we're in the United States of America, but it can happen to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't. But um, I wanted to make sure that I did my best so that my family and the people I care about would never be in a situation like that. Yeah. I mean, I definitely believe, I don't know, how soon but i do believe that one day america will collapse i mean it's almost guaranteed basically but yeah i i i definitely get you on that trying to you know prep for the family as much and um that's that's kind of what we got into um 
you know, just mainly since we have kids and stuff trying to be as prepared as possible, you know, if it was just me and my wife, maybe we wouldn't be doing as much, but you know, when you got the kids that adds a whole nother level to it. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I, I would do anything for my kids. So yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's what, I mean, my biggest priorities in life are being a follower of him, mm -hmm. being a family man, mm -hmm. uh, husband, father, those kind of things. And then after that, I don't know, provider, <laughs> yeah. gardener, uh, being there for people like you guys, you know, here, um, those kind of things. But yeah, definitely, you know, oh, well, okay, sorry. Country is definitely in there also. <laughs> yeah. And community and stuff like that. But yeah, that's definitely where my priorities lay. I'm pretty simple. I don't do a lot of, uh, you know, going, I don't go out with the guys, except for maybe mm. some training or something like that every now yeah. and then. Um, pretty much a, just a family man. You know, doing the things here. I, I have plenty to do. I'm way busy. <laughs> yeah, I definitely hear you on that. And that, I, you know, it's kind of a lot of what I am too. You know, definitely Jesus is number one. And then family and everything else follows. And, you know, um, there was a time a while back, you know, when I would go and, you know, go out, you know, riding a side by side and drinking and stuff like that but you know I, I give all that up now so i'm basically just work and come home and work on the homestead and and things like that and it, it's definitely a lot better way to spend your time and definitely more beneficial you know for the family and stuff they they need that you know structure and stuff and you know kids definitely need a father figure you know when i mean you yeah. can raise one as a single mother i'm not saying you can't but it, it's you know not the way that it's designed to be it's designed to be you know a mother and a father that's the way god designed it in the bible you know yeah. they need that structure i actually yeah i was um i was raised as a single child by my mother for the majority of my life um but um, I also had, you know, my mother did a, I feel a phenomenal job. I'm mm -hmm. just so blessed to have a mother like her. Um, but I also had my grandfather who's a world war two, world war two, blah, world war two Marine. Um, that was my father figure, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, unfortunately he passed away about two years ago now. Um, both of them passed, but they were, he was 97 and she was 93. So, you know, it was yeah. long, good life. So um, one thing I did see a question, the roaming prepper. Oh, I got to scroll up now to see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, balkanization. That's what they're talking about. Oh, yeah. You put up on screen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So balkanization. Um, I don't know. I've thought about that a lot. We've talked about our group. We've war gamed it, you know, stuff. Um, I think it might be the best option. Although I hate to say that because, I mean, you know, I fought for my country for 20 years. I served my country. And um, it's just one of those things. Breaking apart the republic would be very, I mean, be sad and be difficult. Mm -hmm. but in the long run i i don't know <laughs> i don't know is the best answer i can have i mean yeah. i think there are definitely there are definitely things that would be advantageous for that um because we're so split as a country right now and i it's frustrating because there's so many there's so many things about uh you know the people aren't communicating um mm -hmm. and they're so offended and they get so mad and stuff like that and they won't listen and stuff like that. I, I try to have open mind. You know, I don't mind speak, speaking with people. I respect yeah. other people's, you know, other people's opinions. But that also becoming coming from man of faith. I respect free will, and I mm -hmm. respect that somebody else has a free will to believe and do whatever they want, as long mm -hmm. as it's not affecting me and my free will. 
then whatever. I don't have to answer for them. You know, only they have to answer yeah. for what they did here. <laughs> so, you know, it's, I guess it's, it's mutual respect. People don't have respect for each other anymore. Um, and you yeah. know, the cancel culture, all that BS is just, that's so dumb. I mean, I get yeah. a form of cancel culture, I guess would be like, okay, a business not supporting your beliefs or being like, say, for example, anti constitutional or something like that and then you choosing not to shop there that's fine that's to me that's not canceling though that's you're um mm -hmm. putting your money where your mouth is and you're standing up for that's, your belief that's just canceling, capitalism yeah exactly canceling would be you know okay then going online talking about your trash and trying to get everybody else to do it you know mm -hmm. and that's a little bit different but yeah i don't <laughs> it's just it's a complicated world out there nowadays i don't understand a lot of it um, especially, you know, being here in Western Washington, mm -hmm. where I'm at specifically, you know, my county, surrounding counties, I don't really see that, that much. Pretty mm -hmm. much everybody is, mo majority of people are like minded with me. Yeah. Um, but you go to Seattle, it's a totally different story. Olympia, totally different story. Uh, or story. You see now what's happening down in Portland. I mean, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm like right in between Seattle and Portland where all the whack jobs are happening, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't really come out here. I mean, if it ever did, it, I have a feeling it would be shut down real quick. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, that's the same way up here where I live in Virginia. I'm, you know, rural. Everybody is, for the most part, like me, you got a couple of, you know, left leaners or whatever, you'll see them riding down the road by themselves in the car with the windows up with the mask on. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you see some of that, but yeah. for the most part, yeah. you know, everybody out here is pro freedom, pro second amendment, you know, leave me alone. I'll leave you alone. But, you know, the rest of Virginia, the bigger parts of the cities, you know, like Charlottesville, Blacksville, uh, Blacksburg, uh, DC, they have so many people in those built up areas, they control the whole state. That's why Virginia is always blue because of those. And most of them are, you know, big university towns and they have all these college kids from everywhere that they indoctrinated, you know, so they vote a certain way because of that. But yeah. for the most part, you know, Virginia is conservative, but it just doesn't mm -hmm. show on paper but yeah and that's i mean you know from what i've seen you look at a map of the u.s it's pretty much like that everywhere i mean the entire u.s is solid red just mm -hmm. blue in all the big population centers yeah so i like the idea i guess of like i don't know if you ever heard of the american readout uh, -uh i had Okay, the American Readout concept. It's uh, they have a website. A lot of it was done through um, a site I used to go to all the time. I haven't in a long time. It's uh, um, oh gosh, it's a prepper survival blog. That's it, mm -hmm. survival blog. Um, and James Wesley Rawls. And uh, he wrote, I forget which books, he wrote some books also, but the American readout concept was, the idea was, it was uh, Eastern Washington, Eastern Oregon, Idaho, Mon or Wyoming, and Montana, and basically setting that up as a readout for conservative like-minded um, people of faith to mm -hmm. encourage them to move to that area. So you kind of create like a mini balkanization, although it's still... It's not official. It's just mm -hmm. moving to an area where you can be around like-minded people and build communities to support each other, you know, um, have churches mm -hmm. to support each other, all those kind of things, which I like the idea. And I think that kind of happens, you know, uh, organically mm -hmm. anyway, like we see the Ozarks. That's a popular place. There's a lot of it going on in Florida. There's, you know, Texas. There's places in Arizona, Tennessee, Kentucky, um, you know, Idaho, Utah, um, you know, there's different places around that, that are like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think encouraging people to do it is cool. 
Um, but I think a lot of it happens organically. For, yeah. uh, for, a, long, for a long time, we, I wanted to move to the Ozark so bad. And then my you know, wife's medical condition, stuff like that, job, different things like that. We decided to stay put here because in our immediate area, we're surrounded by a lot of really good people, a lot of preppers, big prepper mm-hmm. community right around me, a lot of farms, um, people growing their own food, raising their own animals, a lot of good infrastructure, you know, in, prepper infrastructure, not big infrastructure. Um, yeah. The ability to shut down our area and defend it is, is very mm-hmm. good and stuff like that. But um, recently we have reapproached the topic. So unofficially, we're kind of keeping that in mind right now with my older daughter, her husband and their kids. Mm-hmm. Maybe possibly, although don't quote me on it, possibly mm-hmm. looking at Arkansas, you know, Arkansas Ozark area. Yeah. Um, just talking right now, though. That's cool. Um, I had a buddy of mine. Um, I don't know if you've seen him or not. He's got a bigger channel than I do, but uh, the Shield Bearer of Faith. Oh yeah, if definitely you checked him out. Yep. Um, me and him were close. You know, he lived about thirty minutes away from me for a while, and we get together once a week and uh, work out and do some training and stuff like that. And he ended up uh, leaving up here and moving down there to oklahoma he's working with a bear with refuge refuge medical now yep but yeah uh, i don't i don't i mentioned it on uh the live stream the other night with gray man prepping um mm-hmm. i actually other than a couple of your videos lately a couple of gray's videos lately um i really don't watch youtube so people will you know i, I said it on his live stream people will say mm-hmm. oh you're copying so-and-so's idea and i'm like really i'm yeah. um, okay that's impossible because i don't watch anybody else's content i wish mm-hmm. i had the time seriously there's a lot of stuff you know i'm a patron of like four or mm-hmm. five different channels and i never watch their patreon videos i just can't i just mm-hmm. am a patron because I, I believe in supporting them um yeah and you know like like tj viking preparedness you know um um i forget what has changed his name to now the liberty cannon or whatever rod yeah um yeah there's a lot of good there's a lot of good people out there and like you said um um she'll bear her faith yeah um mm-hmm. i think i've watched i've only actually watched i think one of his videos would love to watch more seems like a really good guy yeah you know? so yeah it's definitely he's he's another one of those really good guys yeah He's got a lot of good stuff on his channel and everything. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, you know, he he said that he'd done a video um, a while back that um, Bear seen and, you know, he did a video response to him or whatever. Uh, Shield Bear did to Bear. And they got to talking and everything, and, you know, they became friends and stuff. And he had went down there and done some stuff, you know, off and on. And then, mm-hmm. you know, a few months ago when everything was just getting crazy with, you know, police and stuff, you know, he was thinking about getting out of there. And then, you know, Bear gave him an op- uh, offer, and, you know, he went with it. So he had been wanting yeah. to, to, you know, go for a while. Uh, with the community that Bear has built down there, you know, versus, you know, how normal mags are, you know, get together once in a while on the weekend type of thing, how they pretty much all down there live on the same place and, you know, do stuff every day. And that's what he was wanting, you know, which I would like to have something like that here too, but we just hadn't built up to that yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite videos I've ever seen on YouTube was um, TJ's uh, Bear Independent video about, um, I forget what it, if he won the lottery or something like that. It was it was probably over a year ago, but he talked mm-hmm. about what, if he just suddenly had, you know, millions or hundreds of millions of dollars, what would he do? And he described, mm-hmm. you know, buying land, building buildings, setting up infrastructure, having off-grid power systems, wells, water, you know, ponds, food, gardens, all this stuff, basically building a town that was preppers and then invite people in. Yeah. That would be, would be so awesome. Although, mm. you know, coming along with that, there's also, there's of course challenges and stuff like that. You don't want it to become socialist. You don't want it to become mm. autocratic. You don't want, you know, stuff like this. So it mm. would be, it would be possible. It would just be a lot of stuff. You'd have to be very mindful of, 
um, you know, having a good, solid um, yeah. governing bo- governing body. You know, like I think he even mentioned, I give like have like a council of like a city council mm. and have at least w- probably one member from each household beyond yeah. that with e- with equal voting rights um, be on it. And yeah, there's a lot to it, but yeah, that would be so cool to have a actual kind of like a commune like back yeah. in the sixties, you know, but have a prepper community. Um, and I know there's been a lot of people have kind of thrown them together. Some that some have been kind of successful T te- or, uh, pastor Joe up on Shofar mountain. Um, a lot of them though are tend to follow, um, the, um, like Torah. the guidelines of a guidelines of a specific faith, whether mm-hmm. it be uh, the Torah or some other faith or something like that, which is fine. I totally get yeah. the uh, the reasoning behind that because you want to make sure that you're like minded and you're on the same moral basis. Um, mm-hmm. I would I would tend to if like I was going to set it up, I wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't have a have a faith specific. I would definitely want people of faith. I would definitely have it like like some people. Um, that follow Torah, um, mm-hmm. hesitate to use the word Christian. Um, yeah. I don't use it. I don't use it as a term meaning a big church Christian. And in, in, in that sense, I use it to s- describe a follower of Christ. So to me, mm-hmm. that's, what's important. Um, you know, Torah is really interesting. I, I really enjoy actually learning about other faiths. I, I have mm-hmm. a very open mind when it comes to that. Um, I, I enjoy learning about things like a lot of what I've heard, you know, TJ, Pastor Joe talk about, I've watched some of his, videos over on the Shofar Mountain channel with it are the his his um 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 his what are they called I forget his speeches I yeah, forget. Sermon. sermons there you go because yeah. <laughs> they were with sermons and you know a lot of it is uh, is is really cool and I you know mm-hmm. I, I uh, um I find a lot of agreement in it um and I think that I would I would hope that everybody be a little more open minded as far as faith goes, because. Like I said, we're all if, you know, talking about the Christian community, followers of Christ, um, people Mm -hmm. that are actually doing it. um, I don't really care if you I'm not going to look down or treat anybody differently if they're a follower of Torah, if they're Southern Baptist, if they're a Methodist, a Lutheran, LDS, whatever it is. I think, yeah. that, you know, at least 80, maybe even 90% of the doctrine we share. And instead mm-hmm. of concentrating on our differences, if we concentrated more on our, um, our, what we share in common, that we'd be better off as a community and as a people. Um, and I really dislike when people in certain faiths, or I've seen faiths, take the time spend the time, the money, and the effort to basically slander another faith that's most, you know, made up of just good people. Mm-hmm. I don't like that at all. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, you know, uh, a lot of people will get, you know, hung up on doctrines and things like that. And there's definitely some that are false, but at the same time, you know, if you're following Jesus, number one, and, you know, the whole Bible, you've got to read it for yourself. You can't just, you know, side with one doctrine and it's like, you know, this is right, you know, and you've never even read it for yourself. You have to decide for yourself. You have mm-hmm. to discern. And that's one of those things, you know, like you watching my videos, you, you, I mention, you know, blessings. I mentioned Heavenly Father, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, I don't mention what specific faith I am because I, I don't feel it really matters. And mm-hmm. um, I'm not going to create some kind of alienation or uh, friction between anybody or anything. Um, mm-hmm. However, I am. I have in my Amazon cart um, the scriptures, your, the, the Torah. Um, mm-hmm. that I'm going to be ordering because I'm very interested in reading it. I think that's really cool. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so, and like I said, I, I have a, yeah, I guess, you know, I have an open mind. I'm, I'm not, I don't hate anybody for everything. I understand that there are definitely things that I agree less with mm-hmm. <laughs> certain faiths, not of the Christian genre. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, yeah. but I also hesitate to, um, I've actually, my 13 year old son has, has made comments, you know, because I was overseas a lot in the military 
And mm. he's like, oh, well, don't you hate, you know, said um, faith? And I'm like, no, mm -hmm. not at all. If I ever came across as that, that you got that in your mind, then I apologize. I failed yeah. in not making sure that you understand that there are people, there are bad people in every faith on earth mm -hmm. and there are good people on every faith on earth and the ma majority of people in probably every faith on earth um are probably good people yeah some well, you know i maybe, agree with that they, they may be a little misguided uh, according yeah. to someone or other but i i feel the majority of people that follow a faith uh, for real mm -hmm. um are probably you know good people I think the yeah. bad ones are uh, bad ones are a minority and they cause a lot of problems. I mean, I've I've been in a lot of those arid countries and I'll tell you what, the people back in the mountains working their farms and stuff like that, they're just like you and me. All they want to yeah. do is all they want to do is grow their food, raise their crops, you know, raise their animals, feed their families and take care of their family and their community. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're good well, people. Yeah, I've never been over there or anything, but I mean all you see on TV and the media is the radicals because they're just pushing mm -hmm. prop propaganda, you know. You yeah. know, the majority of the people are not like that. But, you know, I will say that I don't go out of my way to offend anybody either. But, you know, mm -hmm. I plant my faith on Jesus. You know, that's yeah. the number one. That's what I follow. And yeah. I don't mean to offend anybody by that, but that's where I stand. And, mm -hmm. you know, anybody that doesn't know Jesus that hasn't tried it, I recommend them to, <laughs> you know, give it a try because, yep. you know, that's, you know, the only way to heaven and the, you know, one true savior. And, yep. you know, that's where I stand on that. But, oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody's different. They have different beliefs and everything, but, you know. That's where I stand. And I see a lot of people, um, you know, even in chats of uh, Prepper Nation and throughout my own chats and stuff like that, you know, with the whole church thing. And, you know, it's true that you don't have to go to church to be saved or know God or anything like that. But they'll talk about, you know, this church and that church. Well, I quit going because of hypocrites or they did this or did that. And I mean, some churches are, I mean, they'll have, you know, a pastor that's following a false doctrine himself or whatever. But, you know, why, what are you doing to change that? What are mm -hmm. you doing to stand up and make your voice heard? You know, you can't just quit going. You got to stand up and you got to call sin, sin. When it's in there, you got to call it out. And that's yep. why the church is in the shape it's in now is because the Christians have become spineless. And it's the same yep. thing with the country. The, the spiritual realm governs the physical. The church has gotten weak and the people in America has gotten weak. When you have these you know, things go on and these laws come up, then people wants to run to a different state. But it's eventually going to follow there too. Um, if you remember year before last, I think it was in Virginia when um, the Democrats took over the majority of control, then they were pushing, you know, all these anti second amendment stuff. And then that's when everybody started having rallies and become second amendment sanctuary counties and stuff. You know, you've yep. got, you know, I'm not saying call for violence or anything like that, but you've got to stand up and be heard. You can't keep yeah. getting steamrolled, you know, and I know you believe that way, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely. I mean, you got to. Yeah, you got to you got to stand up for what you believe. I mean, that's just like you just said it. I mean, you know, just like um, for faith, for Jesus, for Constitution, for, you know, I mean, I feel that um, not being a constitutional scholar, but reading it a lot and, uh, you know, it being very important to me is that, um, I mean, I, I, every time I read it, it's just, it's an amazing 
document. I mean, mm-hmm. just the words that they used back then, the way they spoke was just so awesome. Yeah. And I, I firmly believe that not only were those was the, were the Constitution, the, the rights that are protected in the Constitution, I know that they were, you know, that those, those our freedoms are given to us by God. And that mm-hmm. they're only protected by the Constitution. The Constitution doesn't give them to us. It just protects exactly. them. Exactly. But I really feel that the entire Constitution was divinely inspired. I know that he had a hand in it. Because, mm-hmm. and I, I know, I, you know, I'm, I'm not under any, um, I, I don't believe our founding fathers were perfect. No way. Mm-hmm. But I believe that definitely that, that, that they were divinely inspired during that time frame and in building this country. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's how the country was built to begin with, was people looking for religious freedom. Yep. You know, it, it was founded on God to begin with. And, you know, then when America started taking God out of everything, then we find ourselves in the mess we're in now when people don't even know which bathroom to use. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to break the addiction. <laughs> it's not a beer. It's a bad yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do anything like that. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to quit that too. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I get. Yeah, what you're saying is is right on. Um, Constitution was taken from the Book of Deuteronomy, Jennifer Cruz. Yeah, I mean, definitely, it's uh, not word for word, but yes, mm-hmm. the uh, the intent. Yeah. The the principles of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's another thing. I wish I had more time also to read scripture so mm-hmm. that I, I'm, I'm really impressed and, and amazed that um, people have their understanding of scripture. And um, I know that it's not about memorizing it, yeah. but that it's about knowing the real the meaning of it. Um, mm-hmm. But it still really impresses me when people are able to quote scripture because I don't think I can quote a single scripture verse, although I've read the Bible, you know, I've read the Bible, the scriptures and everything front to back several times, at least. I mean, the Old Testament, it's very big and very daunting, Mm -hmm. but I know I've read it at least, I think, three times. New Testament, you know, a lot more times um, and sections, you know, a lot more often, obviously. I have it marked, Mm -hmm. written on, you know, all over the place to go back to it and stuff. Um, but I still can't quote scripture. That'd be one of those things I wish I could. I've actually thought about going, taking college classes and maybe even to getting a degree in, um, oh, I forget what it's, what it's called, but like a faith degree, um, Mm -hmm. just not really to use, but just for better understanding and and for maybe more ability to do that. And I wouldn't use it per se, but, um, I just, it's one of those things. Yeah, I do have time to read my scriptures. Of course, I do. I do that. Uh, not as much time as I wish, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I'll be honest. You know, I'm not the perfect Christian, and I don't read and and pray as much as I should. Um, Reverend's definitely got me on that. Orville, um, he can quote you all kind of scripture because you know he grew up in it, and all of his families were preachers, and he is too. And I'm. I'm, uh, you know, starting to learn more. I grew up in church, but I, I wasn't, you know, as close with God and everything. But yeah, um, I need to read more and and study it. Um, you know, that is a, a downfall that I have. Mm-hmm. I do well, know. I, I know most of it, the stories and, you know, kind of paraphrasing. I can't quote you know, word for word. What? Sorry. Trying to get little oh, you're narrow, good. <laughs> a little bit of patience. Um, oh, you're good. Yeah, I, uh, my mom, I was, I, we, my family went to church until I was about three, two or three, I think. And then, uh, I think I was about two. Um, actually mm-hmm. my, birth father was extremely abusive in every single um, way you can define the word abusive. Um, he was an alcoholic, chain smoker, ended up um, later on being diagnosed schizophrenic, 
um, but my mom left him in, when I was about two. Um, and then I guess the church kind of, they didn't treat her right. You know, I, I get divorce. You're not supposed to do, but in situations like that, I mean, you're being abused. That yeah. I think is a little more understandable. But anyway, my mom left the church and um, didn't, I grew up without being in church. I still, you know, I always believed in God. I always, you know, I read the Bible, some stuff like that all throughout my life, but I really didn't find Christ and I didn't really accept him and bring him into my life full time until about 2006. And unfortunately, I wish I could go and go back and have him involved in my life more sooner. But I guess it's all in his time. The fact yeah. is, I did find him, you know, so I think that's what matters is I did yeah. find him. Um, part of the process I know was I was big into just a second, baby. I was big into drag racing um, for a lot of years, had a very fast car, nine and a half second car um, that I sunk a lot of money into and sunk money, sunk money, sunk money. And I was always making it faster, look nice or stuff like that. And what, it, what I finally figured out was that there was this hole. There was mm -hmm. right here. I was trying to fill with buying things and mm -hmm. I didn't, didn't realize it until I found my faith that, that it wasn't there anymore. It was full. Mm -hmm. And at that point, then I also right, right before that I, I, uh, I, I married and, um, had a family. Mm -hmm. So my priorities totally, totally shifted. And I haven't, I haven't raced since because yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was, it was fun. It was cool, but it's just not what matters to me anymore. And I really thought it'd be a big deal because like when I yeah. found my faith, when I found my faith, I'm like, I told my wife, well, points races are on Sundays. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's the whole thing. Racing. I, my big points days, you know, the, the championship for the season is on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, she's like, it'll be okay. And I didn't believe it. Yeah. But then starting to go to church, finding my faith, it really worked out where it, it was okay. It, it basically mm -hmm. it very quickly meant nothing to me anymore. Instead, mm -hmm. doing what he wanted me to do is what filled that hole and made more mm -hmm. my life meaningful. Yeah, um, definitely your priorities, you know, change when you, you know, get saved and, and start doing things like that. It uh, changes your whole priorities. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else? People I haven't been very doing very well keeping up on chat. If anybody else had any other questions or you also wanted to anything specific, I don't know. Well, I guess we've been almost an hour, so that's yeah. Um, I don't have to go. I'm just usually just I'll I'll try to um, ask you know the guests and stuff. Uh, what are some of your prepping goals for this year? Um, most of my preparedness goals are self reliance related. Mm -hmm. um, being able to produce more, I'd really like to get um, the chicken situation mm -hmm. rectified. Finish uh, my my chicken coop. Um, chicken run, all this stuff like that, making that really secure so I can actually have chickens. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of it was the reason why we didn't get chickens before was because I wanted to be able to have the ability to go visit my parents um, that are in another state. So we couldn't like have chickens. I know we do have neighbors and stuff like that, but recently I went over and I saw their chicken um, mansion. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that things like they showed me they have a, uh, um, a solar powered door that they have the main chicken coop. And then they have a, um, a solar sensor that whenever it gets light, the door opens and the chickens go out into a, a, a secure mm -hmm. run area where they can go out into there. And then when it gets dark, it shuts automatically and their chickens learn really quick. And they're in there <laughs> half hour to an hour before it gets dark. Mm -hmm. They're all in there. All the, all the ladies are in and the door shuts and it's so secure and he showed me uh on-demand watering systems on-demand food systems 
I had no idea that you could do that. They could literally walk, you know, leave and go somewhere for yeah. a couple of weeks and their chickens would be fine. I didn't, have, I had no idea that things like that existed. So now that I know that I definitely, we're going to be pushing for chickens. Um, yeah. cause that's a big part. We already do the gardening thing. Like you see, um, and if we had our garden that we have combined with the eggs and from the chickens and meat chickens, um, we would be pretty close to providing almost all of our caloric needs for the year, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, not a hundred percent, but that's where I'd like to be. Uh, obviously, you know, that's a lot of people's goals. Um, we'd be close, but also stockpiling food and water mm -hmm. is, you know, pretty much a lot of the other general preparedness areas. Um, the stuff I talk about over on Patreon, you know, that they don't like talking about here on this platform, that area, I'm good. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's another way I kind of got into prepping was from the tactical aspect. Um, yeah. So that's an area I'm good. Um, would I always like to improve in there? Sure, I would. But right now it's far, hard to find those kind of seeds. Um, mm -hmm. luckily I'm good. I don't have to buy any of those for a long, long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I would like to obviously get more in that area. Also security and defensive and stuff like that. I'm always trying to improve in that, but predominantly the boring stuff. A lot of people mm -hmm. find boring the food, water and growing and producing my own food. That's my main priority. Yeah. What baby? Orville's got a question for you. Oh, sorry. I didn't see it. <laughs> what board game would you pick for SHTF? Um, we love Catan in our mm. family. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Catan. I have. And then we also, like, we also really like Clue and um, um, oh gosh, that one... <laughs> Monopoly's good, yeah. What's the other one, honey, with the, all the questions? Trivial Pursuit. Mm. We have Trivial Pursuit for family. And even the kids' ones, <laughs> they're difficult. <laughs> um, and the version we have is funny. It's actually, you can tell it was it was an older one. Uh, probably came out mid-90s-ish because it still talks about the Soviet Union. Mm. And a lot of the questions are out of date. So, it, you know, but it's fun. Um, those are our predominant, I guess, our main ones. What, baby? I think this is a... Oh, Shoots and Ladders. Partial little question. One, little, little one's favorite game. That's <laughs> cool. Or okay. Candyland. I'm sorry, not Shoots and Ladders. Candyland. Yeah. So what were you... Uh... I'm not sure. I don't think this... Uh, as to there we go. Oh, consider getting a worm farm. Yeah. All right. You I have, ahead. I have uh checked it out. I've watched some videos on it. Um, I do have a uh plastic toad outside with some, you know, um, grass and old plant stuff and and things like that in there, and just some regular earthworms that I dug up around here. Um, as a compost bin, but I haven't ordered the actual compost and worms, but um, it seems interesting um, for a couple of reasons, you know, of course, it'll make compost and everything and also having a bunch of worms around in case you uh, want to go fishing or something. That's a benefit, too. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, the composting aspect is pretty cool. Um, haven't done that because um, when I usually when somebody mentions, you know, worms. I think of you know putting them in the soil for like the raised beds and the garden and stuff like that, and having good soil. Um, mm -hmm. So I haven't thought about that aspect. I don't do that aspect, but my soil around here is awesome. I mean, seriously, I like if I move a container, I'm mm -hmm. pulling you know worms that are you know that big around and and that long out of there, um, five or six of them. And then what I do is I so I move my containers every now and then just to get the worms to throw them in the worm in the raised beds. But anytime I dig up potatoes, it's literally almost like digging up a, a worm farm. There are so many worms in my soil. Mm. It's, it's, I'm very blessed with that. So I haven't yeah. done it from that aspect, that aspect. I haven't had to from that aspect. But the other aspect is very interesting. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I try to watch a lot of gardening videos too, you know, because I really like growing stuff and producing our own food and stuff like that. And that's one thing I like about your channel. You got a lot of gardening going on. What's your favorite thing to grow? Uh, peas and beans. Just because they grow so well here and produce so well mm -hmm. here. Uh, oh, also, I got to throw potatoes in there. I, I love I love potatoes. It's my favorite thing to eat is potatoes. Mm -hmm. But um, last year's garden, so we had, what was it? I think we had 10 raised beds last year. And we didn't have them full of peas. Basically, I had um, the big, um, you've seen those, the containers that have the the yellow the black with the yellow lids yeah the large ones the large one so i had two of those with peas and a row one row along a raised bed and another raised bed i think had half mm -hmm. so only one row a half and two containers and i was harvesting uh for several weeks on end i was harvesting three to four pounds of peas every single day and wow. the same with beans yeah, and the same with beans. So that was um, a crazy amount. Mm -hmm. um, and this year, I think we're going to have more peas this year. We definitely have way more potatoes uh, and a lot of other things. But peas and beans grow amazing here. I failed at sweet potatoes last year. Um, it's not really the environment. You can grow them here. And we do have four this year that I put in a container that we started via in the jar and the in the water and stuff like that i had one really good sprout and a couple of the really good ones and they're mm -hmm. actually coming up one those one sprout is about that tall now with leaves and everything and the other sprouts are starting to come up out of the ground so i'm hopeful that we'll actually get some sweet potatoes out of that mm -hmm. but last year I dedicated two full beds to them and that was a, a failure as far as a waste of space but yeah. this year i'm just doing one container and dedicating the beds to a lot of other things um but yeah, my favorite foods that we use the most of in cooking in our family is onions, garlic, and potatoes. Mm -hmm. So we dedicated a lot more room to them this year. Yeah. Uh, potatoes are really good. They, they're they really useful. You can um, use them in so many ways and make so many different things out of them. They're definitely a good staple. But... Uh, John Mack, I don't know if this is for me or Mike or maybe both, but I have a well and um, we have some different, we have rivers nearby and ponds and everything too. So water is not too much of an issue. Same here. We have a well um, and around where, where I am, there's several, there's quite a few lakes. There's lakes almost everywhere around here um, as well as lots of rivers, streams and stuff like that. And all over my area is the Puget Sound, which I mm -hmm. get, yes, it's salt water. So not optimal. You could do a solar still and, um, you know, collect, uh, de desalinate the water, solar desalinator, basically. Um, that would be very, very difficult and time intensive. I wouldn't even try to do that because there's so much other sources of water around here. Yeah. And being in Western Washington, it rains People say it rains all the time here and they complain about it. But honestly, between right about now-ish, May to October, it really doesn't rain. I'd say mm. June to October, it hardly rains at all. We have a very, very beautiful summer here. Um, 70s, 80s, some days in the 90s. When it's in the 90s here, that's very, very hot for here. Yeah. Um, not. We do have humidity, but it's not southern humidity. It's not like what yeah. you have there in Virginia mississippi um you know uh, um missouri arkansas area it's not like that um it's different but it does affect how hot it is i know that because 90 degrees here is very hot um but yeah, yeah. we it, it's it's good but yeah we have water all around us so it's it's something we still stockpile we try to stockpile as much as we can also mm -hmm. just because but yeah it's all over yeah, we usually have a lot of rain too. Um, sometimes in like July and stuff, it'll go for a while without raining, but usually we'll have, you know, a couple inches of rain every two weeks or something like that. So we stay 
you know, pretty good. I, I do want to build a rain catchment system. That's one thing I haven't done yet, you know, just for, mm -hmm. you know, in case and everything, but I hadn't got on that yet. Uh, just started a compost pile a couple of months ago and I really wish I'd have done that, you know, a couple of years ago because when we did the greenhouse, it just had to buy so much pot and soil. And man, that stuff's expensive. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, we uh we started what a couple of years ago as far as actually putting in a raised bed and starting gardening and stuff like that. It was only a couple of years ago, honestly. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, we bought the bags of potting soil from like Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, recently though, as we're building all these raised beds, that would be way too expensive. So we go to a, uh, uh, topsoil place, uh, you know, like a, um, rock and, you know, rock yard where they have soil, they have yeah. rocks, they have all different kinds of things. And we get a, uh, topsoil mushroom compost mix. It's a 50, 50 garden mix. And mm -hmm. that is, I think it's a lot more reasonable. It's about, it was about $40 a yard, which to me, that's not too expensive. Um, mixed in with our good topsoil here, um, so we use we use that. Last year, I know we brought in we brought in about eight yards. Last year and this year, we've brought in three yards. Mm -hmm. um, trying to be trying to be a lot more um, um, thrifty and um, budget conscious this year due to circumstances you're aware of. <laughs> yeah um yeah so and you know being a lot more mindful of that and making a lot making do a lot more with what we have getting mm -hmm. some of that but doing a lot more mixing because honestly looking it back i'm like our soil here is really good now if yeah. i had an awesome tractor like you you have you have an <laughs> awesome tractor i wish i had a tractor um then yeah i could be a lot more do a lot more but any kind of in ground the main reason we do raised beds and containers is because I don't have a tractor. Everything yeah. we do that's in ground is done with a Matic and mm -hmm. my, my blood, sweat and tears or my 13 year old's blood, sweat and tears. And if any of you've ever busted ground with a Matic, Oh man. Yeah. That's talk about yeah. a workout. You asked, you asked me what my workout regime at regimen <laughs> is that <Plant> garden, <laughs> maticing the garden, um, you know, running around chasing a four year old all day. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's, and, you know, hauling soil, shoveling, all that kind of stuff that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, that's a lot of it. Just staying active, doing the things. You've been amazed at if you actually, you know, I encourage everybody to get out and do the things, how well you will improve your fitness just by doing those kind of things. Yeah. I tell you what, though, I wouldn't take anything for that tractor, man. That thing's a lifesaver. Um, yeah. I got a really good deal on it. And it came with most of the attachments I have. I've bought a couple recently, but for the, the most part, it was a package deal. And, and man, it was good to go like that. So it, it's definitely, you know, helpful. That's but, one of those things that um, we've, and I say, I see the question in, in just a sec, but I wanted to um, yeah. be kind of like, if, like I said, we're just in the talking phases, so I don't want people to jump on it already, but we're really <laughs> Honestly, thinking about maybe Northwest Arkansas area, the Ozarks, uh, mm -hmm. maybe North Central Arkansas. I don't know exactly where, but we're thinking about it um, because of housing values here in Washington state are insane. We mm -hmm. could sell our house here, buy a very, very nice property with quite a bit of mm -hmm. land, probably six times the amount of land we have here. And still have lots of money left over to buy the tractor, to buy the attachments, to do all that stuff. And I would have the ability to, we wouldn't have a mortgage, we'd pay cash and we would be able to cash out on everything. I wouldn't have to go to work and have a job. Mm -hmm. I would be able to do this YouTube thing full time, which would be such a blessing, which is yeah. really why, that's one reason why we really are honestly thinking about doing that move. If we stay mm -hmm. here, having the mortgage, still got to look at trying to get a job. Yeah. Um, but that's one of those things uh, uh, I saw. Um, was it pastor mentioned I need a Chevy tractor? Heck, I'd take any tractor. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's he's trolling on that because um, I got a Ford tractor and he's a Ford man. And, you know, we uh, go back and forth since I got a Chevrolet pickup and stuff. And he's uh trolling right now but 
Yeah, uh, Louise on the YouTube names. Um, I went with Six Shooter just because that's kind of my nickname around here and stuff. And it's not really as cool of a story as you might think. When I first started driving and got my license and everything, I had a pickup and I got some of those, uh, you know, toy six shooters there to the store and I attached them on the grill. And then that's where I got the name from. So not really anything epic or anything, but there you go. <laughs> All right, and I came up with um, asymmetrical preparedness. Uh, basically, I wanted, you know, to try to prep or preparedness. Something in that part obviously makes sense in my name. Um, mm -hmm. The asymmetrical came from a combination of things. Was um, asymmetrical warfare, which is guerrilla warfare, 5G warfare, you know, fourth, fifth generation warfare, um, insurgencies, that kind of stuff, fighting insurgencies, some experience I have from the military um, in regards to that, as well as acknowledging the fact that we don't try as we might we are never going to be completely symmetrical in our in our preps we're going to have yeah. strong areas we're going to have weak areas um and so trying to always identify our weak areas and strengthen them hearkening mm -hmm. back to my drag racing days a lot of people you know I'll throw this in there kind of as a parallel a lot of people um think i call them magazine right we used to call them magazine racers where they they buy a car and they look at these things in a magazine and says oh this gives you 10 horsepower this gives yeah. you 20 horsepower they throw it in the car and they say we got 30 horsepower no that's not true because yeah you're not addressing your limiting factor maybe air mm -hmm. intake is your limiting factor and you're adding on exhaust which is doing zero for your horsepower you mm -hmm. always have to identify the weak points of your car and build that that's how you build true horsepower same thing with preparedness yeah you always have to identify your weaknesses and build upon them because you don't want you want to mitigate your weakness as much as possible yeah, so it goes back that, to a chain is only as strong as the weakest link exactly and a single point single point um failure is not where you want to be that's why they talk about the rule of three um mm -hmm. one is none two is one kind of thing um, yeah you know those kind of things the prepper prepper rules which yeah it's if you have one item and it fails well then you're you're out of luck yeah that's true and uh rev there is trolling he said forward nation in the chat how do i like that i'll take my chevrolet and i'll pull everyone on backwards so come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually talking about that it's funny um i, I know somebody else drives a ford <laughs> i have a yeah i have a, i have a six liter power stroke ford that um i absolutely love that truck but mm -hmm. I'm not a Ford guy. I am. I really, honestly, I like all three. I like Ford, Chevy, and Dodge. My yeah. particular, like, if I was going to buy a car, I would probably pick Chevy, maybe Dodge. Um, although the Ford has some nice cars too. Um, trucks, I would I would lean towards the the um, Fords and the Dodges, just mm. because. I've also been four wheeling. I've also have a lot of experience four wheeling in my life. I've been, you know, four wheeling trails around this area for most of my life um, yeah. in different vehicles. I've had Jeep Grand Cherokees. I had an early Bronco, a 73 Bronco. I've had a lot of different vehicles and doing trail riding and four wheeling, mud and rock crawling, all this kind of stuff. And I like a solid axle. Chevrolets don't have solid axles. They have independent front suspensions. <clears throat> on I'm, and I'm talking about their heavy duty trucks. Obviously, yeah. almost all of the light duty trucks have independent suspensions nowadays. But um, I like having a solid axle under my truck. Just personal yeah. preference. Um, and when I got my truck, honestly, I really wanted an 06 Cummins Dodge. Mm -hmm. um, it was just the fact that I have a lot of respect for the Cummins and the um, uh, you know in, in the uh, the Allison trans or not Allison. Sorry. I forget what darn it brain <laughs> fart. What do they have in them? The Dodges, uh, the Dodges. I don't remember what transmission they have, but Dodge transmission ain't hitting on much, but I think Chevrolet has the Allison transmission. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot of respect and, for the Allison, um, the Cummins yeah. engine. Um, I like but, the Cummins. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love them. And some people are like, oh, well, it sounds like a tractor. I'm like, yeah, that's one reason why I like it. Yeah. But I do like I, I do like the V8, and I really like the turbo whistle on my truck. Is I love that. It's so cool. Yeah. Uh, but we got this package deal, you know, truck, fifth wheel combination. That was a great deal. Awesome truck. Great. I learned about the six liter. I, I learned about the issues with it. Um, so I went about, I, I corrected, I did the things you had to do and it's mm -hmm. proven itself to be an amazing truck. So I, I really like it. Um, I'm really impressed with it. So, um, like I said, I'm not a die, die in the wool Ford guy. I actually like them all for different reasons. Yeah. All right. So, uh, it looks like Oval here is, uh, challenging me. That's the way I take it. I think this Sunday at church, we're going to have to. Pull them out there and hook a chain to them. Turn on the <laughs> camera and live stream and and see who can pull who. So um, unless Orville's going to chicken out on us, that's going to be happening. It's going to be going down. So hey, uh, whenever <laughs> we whenever we end a live stream and we're mm -hmm. just you just you and me when it, when he can't hear, I'll I'll tell you you, you probably already know the secret to. Uh, mm -hmm pull-offs but I'll, I'll i'll make sure you know the secret to pull off <laughs> and i'll tell you what it has nothing to do with horsepower no not at all nope. <laughs> but uh yeah i used to have a dodge uh pickup i had a o2 uh half ton with the 5.8 and it was a good truck i liked it but the only problem with i had with dodge is when they break down man they were so expensive parts are ridiculously expensive for a dodge and yeah you know they, yeah they are a little bit more chevy i just are, had you know yeah i just had so much problem with them then i went to the chevrolet um my first truck was a ford it was a 85 ford and you know it wasn't it was all right but it wasn't nothing special you know and everything but i kind of kind of done had one of all three in one form or another you know um just whatever you like whatever gets you from a to b <laughs> yeah honestly I've, I've owned all of them and uh you know I, I wish i had some wood i don't have any wood to knock around around here but uh mm -hmm. so i'll just say that all of them have uh have done well by me i really honestly mm -hmm. haven't had any specific problems with any of them well Actually, I did have a 97 Dodge Ram. You know what the Dodge transmissions were like then. Yeah. Um, I did I did have the transmission go out on me. But that was one of those things that's like, okay, it had 150,000 miles on it. So I'm like, I'll accept that, you know. Yeah. Other than that. But I yeah, that Dodge, Dodge that I had... I forgot how many miles was on it, but I ended up having to rebuild the transmission in it. And then, uh, the re end went out on it too. And that was, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back after that. I'm like, I'm done with it and sold it and moved on to something else because it's just, you know, and that and it had, you know, small problems here and there and everything. It just nickel and dime you to death, you know? Yeah. We bought that as our, um, when we bought our what is now predominantly our bug out location our primary mm -hmm. bug out location because we bought this mountaintop property um way 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 off grid in the middle of the mountains mm -hmm. um yeah nobody's finding that but um and when we bought it i was uh retiring from the military and we were actually going to live up there full time we we're just going to be you know off grid uh, homesteaders then my wife was diagnosed with lupus, diagnosed with lupus and uh, all the stuff that comes along with that doctor's appointments and everything and her ability to participate at that level with that ex in that extreme of a situation because it is a little more extreme. Um, it is very so remote that um, it just wasn't feasible for that purpose anymore. We love vacationing up there still. We love um, doing our little in our bug out practices, going up there every once in a while. Um, and we love the fact that we have it for a bug out location. That's amazing. But we bought that Ram, uh, the 97 Ram, um, when we bought the cabin, because that was going to be our, basically our mountain truck, our beater mountain truck. Yeah. That we just drove up and down the roads. And uh, yeah, so, but when we blew, when the transmission blew, I sold it to Buddy at work and uh, he threw in a new transmission and that was a couple of years ago. And 
even with his sons driving it, it's actually <laughs> still all, it's managed to actually live. So he's 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 loving it. Yeah, well, that's okay. good. They're supposed to be tight. But yeah, um, I guess Sorry, we can go ahead and oh, you're fine. I was just gonna say, I guess we could go ahead and and wrap it up and call it a night and all right um, we'll give a few more minutes here anybody got any uh any more questions or anything you want to talk about uh before we go and like i said i appreciate you coming over here and streaming with me um i've had a blast i've been looking forward to it and mm -hmm. being able to hang out with you oh man okay so when you pose this up if any of my subscribers see this at any time, please subscribe to this guy. I wanted, I really wanted to push him over a thousand with this with this live stream, where he, you're sitting at nine fifty six. So yeah, you're getting close, but we really got it. If you guys aren't subscribed, subscribe to him, and I will continue talking about that because we got to get you over a thousand. And I appreciate also, it. And also, view time matters for anybody out there, content creators. We know that. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you want to help out a channel, Six Shooters channel, my channel, any channel, mm -hmm. um, playlists really help. You can just start a playlist and the videos will automatically restart. You can sometimes, wink, wink, <laughs> <laughs> you can start a playlist and then set your cell phone down and go do the homesteady things. Yeah. You know, and, and help out that channel with playtime. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I'll definitely be doing that. And like I said, I want to make sure that any, anybody that's on here now that wasn't earlier when I said it, if any of you guys, I don't care if you have zero subscribers, if you have a, a million subscribers, if you email me, I will, you know, go to your channel, I'll subscribe, I'll give you some view time, I'll do mm -hmm. the best I can, and um, I'll live stream with anybody. It doesn't matter size. You know, if you got one subscriber, you want to live stream with me, sure, let's do it. You know, mm -hmm. um, and that's one thing because we help each other as a community. And last night during um, TJ, Bear Independence, um, he had a uh, just a, a Patreon live stream that was, uh, um, it basically just organically happened. He asked patrons if they wanted him to do a live stream. They said yes, so he did. And I mm -hmm. jumped on there and I mentioned, hey, you know, we'd love to do a live stream. And he's like, let's hook it up. Let's do it. So I'm like so blessed by that. I'm like yeah. amazed. I'm like, I can go live stream with somebody that has 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, so, man. And, and we do that for each other. You know, that's what we do. So, you know, I'm all I'm all yeah. done with that. But that's one, one thing I've liked about uh, John at Prepper Nation. He's done a lot of with other creators and smaller channels and and bridging that gap. You know, that's where a lot of my subscribers come from. And, you know, I've been telling him about you and stuff and hopefully we'll be able to get you on uh, his Saturday night live stream sometime soon. And that'll be a okay. good time, too. But let me know um, when you're going on with Bear so I can watch. Oh, yeah, definitely. that'll be interesting. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But, yeah, a bunch of people in the in the in the comment section were Mike and TJ live yeah. streaming epic. And I'm like, I'm, I'm really I'm truly blessed that people feel that way. And yeah. I'm, I'm really I, that's one thing I. I try to portray and get across in my videos is really how much of an honor it is for me to mm -hmm. be there for you guys. And there's so many amazing people out there and the support yeah. and the love and just, it's awesome. Yeah. The, the prepper community is definitely awesome. Yep. What were the two you do for extra proteins in your preps with meat getting so high? Linda Klaus. You want to go? Oh, you can lead off. Oh, okay. Um, okay, extra proteins in my prep. So, um, well, first off, when people say, I've heard it, I've heard a lot of people say in the past that um, beans and rice combine to make a complete protein. That is not true. Mm -hmm. Beans are a complete protein and rice is also a complete protein. They have different they are different types of protein, so they do mm -hmm. work well together. So beans and rice are actually good source of protein. I understand they're mostly carbs, and that's what I count them as. I count them as a carb. But other things also like quinoa is also higher in protein, but it's predominantly a carb. Um, 
things that you can grow. You can actually grow. I talk about Jerusalem artichokes all the time, AKA sunchokes is also what they're mm. known as. 28% protein. That is amazing for a vegetable. Although yeah. they will give you gas. <laughs> At first <laughs> I thought my family and I were immune because we put, um, we cooked up some homestyle potatoes. It's one of our favorites. I love cooking homestyle potatoes. Um, you know, in the cast iron, that's all I cook with is cast iron, love cast iron. But, I do too. Um, and with my wife's medical condition, I, someday she feels well enough to cook and bake and stuff like that. But I do mo mm -hmm. majority of the cooking, although lately she's felt, felt a lot better, done a lot more cooking. But so I do all the cast iron cooking. But anyway, we put a very small amount of Jerusalem artichokes in conjunction with the, with the potatoes, cooked them up. Um, couldn't really taste any different and everything was fine. Then we did do a, I think I did more like a third drew some artichokes and potatoes. And yeah, we did have some gas, um, mm -hmm. uh, gas paints and stuff like that. So I don't know if it's something you'd get used to, um, but it's due to, there's a, off the top of my head, I forget. I did a video about it. I talked about it in the video, what it's called, but it's what makes it, lower on the glycemic index. So it's good. It's good mm -hmm. for, um, it's a good source of carbs and proteins for diabetics. Yeah. Um, but it, it might cause you gas, but you can include that and they grow, they're an invasive species. So they grow crazy. They'll grow mm -hmm. like crazy. The one, I have a three foot by eight foot bed with them in and now I've shown on videos. Um, yes, the day before yesterday, we had 22 popping up. Then yesterday there was 25. Now I think there's like 28 of them popping up. They'll grow mm -hmm. like crazy. And then also I, I store um, canned meats, um, chicken and like roast beef are our favorites. As well as you can get the, um, uh, you can get freeze dried meats. You can get uh, jerkies and things like that. Also, luckily I have a person that's very close to us friend that has a one of those harvest right freeze dryers yeah. that we're going to be working more with him getting some more of that freeze dried and the vacuum sealed buckets for meat um yeah. that's a, that's an amazing thing they're very expensive and they got even more expensive lately because of this whole covid thing more people are mm. getting on board with prepping but um i do things like that i look first off prep what you eat um, if you mm -hmm. follow Torah, obviously you don't eat pork um, and, and, and other things, um, things with paws, which I, you know, I told respect. I don't, my family doesn't eat pork or anything with paws either. Um, it's not a necessarily Torah thing, but mm -hmm. um, we don't eat seafood either. Um, we eat chicken, turkey, beef. And that's pretty much it. I mean, we would eat deer if I go hunting, moose, elk, mm -hmm. those kind of things. Yes, we would. Um, we just don't currently have any. And I haven't hunted in a while. i um, just been too busy with other things. And, you know, that's time away from my family. So yeah. in, a, in, a, in a situation, yes, I would definitely hunt. But it's, uh, you know, just one of those things. I just haven't done it. Um, that's one thing up at my bug out location, primary bug out location. We have amazing, huge um, mule deer and huge um, white tails and elk and moose are also up there. Um, there's one time I came out on the front porch and it was about 50 yards away. There's this nice little draw that goes up in between this low spot and the next ridge. And it's like a deer highway. I come mm -hmm. out on my front porch and just at first glance, I see this rack so big. Mm -hmm. My brain's like elk. I run inside. I grab the 4570. My wife is like, don't shoot the deer. <laughs> She knows me too well. Yeah. So running out, I'm like, okay, honey. I go on the front porch and it wasn't an elk. It was actually a mule deer with this massive rack. I mean, I don't know how many points were on it. It was, it was just massive. And it was mm. just meandering. He's like, you know, just kind of chilling. What's up? Looks over me, keeps on walking. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And then another thing up there is it's the whole mountain range is free range for the cattle ranches down below. Yeah. So we'll wake up some mornings, come on our front porch and there'll be a cow standing there or a couple of cows, you know? So, uh, we don't mess with them obviously because I don't, mm -hmm. and I don't mind it being free range. I look at the cow manure as they just throw that in the compost heap. So, you know, yeah. And in an SHTF scenario, I'd be going down to those farms saying, Hey, you know, what do you need that we can hook you up with? Yeah. And you know, there's this cow hanging out up here. 
you mind if we do some kind of trade where you don't even have no hassle on your part? I'll just harvest this cow. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing is, is awesome. But uh, yeah, I look forward to that. Well, no, I don't look forward to SHTF. <laughs> <laughs> but the opportunity is there, which is awesome. Yeah. So I'm the sorry. Peace of mind. I talked enough about that. It's your chance. It's your turn. I'll shut up. <laughs> oh, that's fine. But yeah, honestly, I would just uh, go right back here and knock something in the head. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. That's why we have so many animals. Um, we've got rabbits. We've got chickens. We've got goats. Um, we've got two cows now. So we got plenty of things to choose from at the moment. Um <clears throat> The only problem with goats and cows, of course, they eat a lot, but it takes a long time for them to reproduce and uh, to be able to get to a harvestable age and everything where rabbits and chickens are uh, definitely a faster. And I lean more towards the chickens, to be honest, you know, because you get eggs, number one, then you get meat and everything. And we try to keep, you know, the incubator full. So as soon as we'll hatch out one bunch of chicks you know we'll get them moved to their place and fill the incubator back up and keep rolling along like that so you can you know always have you know more layers coming up and also the roosters you can either you know butcher them or you can sell them and get some money back and different things like that so it's i really like chickens as a, a number one uh homestead animal in my opinion oh definitely yeah and that's one thing i didn't even think about yes mm -hmm. raising your own animals is obviously the best way to go about it because then you don't have to worry about them going bad they're fresh <laughs> yeah <laughs> until you're ready um and we've thought about goats around here also as dual purpose um meat animal but also to help keep the blackberries back uh -huh. Man, blackberry, they're so invasive here that it's crazy. We cut and cut and cut and pull. I'm actually going to have, this is also like we talk about growing network, mags, mm -hmm. teams, tribes, all these kind of things. Um, good neighbor down the down the road that um, we got a bunch of starts from. I forget if I posted that video or not yet, but um, they have a massive greenhouse. They have animals. They have a hobby farm. I actually think it's like, I think they have 40 or 60 acres just down the road from us. Um, he's going to bring a tractor out here with a, uh, he says he has a, a flail, which I've never yeah. even heard of that. I don't, I don't know anything about equipment. Like TJ can sit there and talk about all the equipment and what a loader does and what this does. I don't know anything about equipment. Honestly, mm -hmm. I, that's something I would have to learn about tractors and stuff. If I ever get say on a homestead, homestead yeah. environment, but, um, he's going to bring that down with a flail. I guess he says it hooks onto and it grabs and a lot of times it pulls him up by the root. So I'm going to have them come through here and flail our, our lower field area because we're on honestly just over an acre, it's like yeah. a little bit less than less than an acre and a half. Most of it's down there mm. and um, it's almost all overgrown with blackberries. So we're going to take that all out, then maybe have them convince them to come back with a tractor with, a, um, you know, actually work the ground and actually have like an in-ground garden like you're used to doing. Yeah. Um, as well, as long as we can get it all fenced in, there's a lot of deer around here get it protected really well um mm -hmm. and then that might be an option if we're staying here maybe not kind of thing yeah you know yeah it's definitely something to consider but um like i was saying with the tractor we have uh we have a lot of weeds and you know just stuff that grows up and everything and it's hard to to maintain by hand you know it takes so much time and energy <laughs> Man, you know, having that bush hog with the tractor, just throwing that on there and, you know, going straight through it in like, you know, two minutes versus an hour of chopping by hand. That is nice. Yeah. That's one of the biggest things that I've seen with a homestead, uh, especially having a full time job is just time, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sure you know that from when you were um, doing everything yeah. you were doing is just time. Yeah. That's one reason why not well a lot of it is to get out of this state <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah because the direction you guys i'm sure you've heard you know about this state yeah not only not only just to get out of here but the uh, ability to not have to work be able to homestead full-time 
yeah. and be in a situation where I could afford to buy tractors, attachments, all that kind of stuff like that, and be around a lot more like-minded people um, would be an amazing blessing for my family and I. That would just be so cool. Yeah, B. Charman, he is in Washington State. Um, yes, Western Washington, un unfortunately. Eastern yeah. Washington Eastern Washington's totally different state. I mean, they're like two states. Because Eastern really? Washington, with the exception of Spokane, of course, major population center, but ex with the exception mm -hmm. of Spokane and Spokane only, um, it's solid red. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really, it's a beautiful place. And I wish that it's, they've thought about that as part of the, uh, um, what is it, the state of liberty, I think they mm -hmm. talked about Western Washington and Oregon, Eastern Oregon combining with Idaho or something. And there's also the greater Idaho thing. And yeah. then also um, the, um, um, oh, shoot. State of Jefferson. State of Jefferson is another great idea, which mm -hmm. is Northern California and Southern Oregon, um, mm -hmm. basically succeeding from their states and becoming their own state. Um, I do, like we talked about balkanization earlier, don't necessarily like balkanization as far as um, um, uh, collapsing the United States. But yeah. I do, I definitely think that having things like that happen, like the state of Jefferson, the state of Liberty or state of greater Idaho or other parts of states breaking off, I think I, I don't see any downside necessarily mm -hmm. um, to that. I'm sure there are downsides. I'm just not aware of them. But uh, most of the states, though, that are blue don't want to let go and will not, are not willing to let go of the red portions because the red yep. portions is where all the work happens. It's where all the exactly. food is produced. It's where all the resources come from. It's where all the, mm -hmm. all the production happens um, other than industry. industry. Industrial normally is in the blue areas, but all yeah. the farming, all the, yeah, all that kind of stuff comes in red areas. And yeah. they're, they're not willing to let go of that because it's, it's a resource and a taxable source of tax. It's income. exactly right. That's where a lot of the taxes come from. And a lot of the smaller, you know, red portions, a lot of people have small businesses and they eat them up on taxes to, you know, support the blue areas. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I would love to sit and talk all night, but little <laughs> one is, my my baby girl has done an amazing job at being patient, but oh yeah, she's Definitely getting a little. So. Uh, I probably need to be getting wrapping this up. All right, well that sounds good. I appreciate you coming on here, and I appreciate everybody watching. And hopefully you've had a good time. And if you hadn't checked out Mike here, go check his channel out. Uh, the link is in the description here. So go give him a sub and thumbs up and all that good stuff like we were talking about earlier uh you know helping content creators out you know getting you know with the algorithms and stuff so you have yeah, any uh and, final thoughts yeah thank you very much for having me here it's it's an honor and a blessing you know i mean like Anytime. you said we help, each other, we help each other out and uh you know no matter how big no matter how small we're a community and you know we're just people just trying to do the things so yeah, support each other, help each other out, do the thing, subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get this guy over a thousand. Yeah, I really <laughs> appreciate it. I, um, you know, it won't be long now. We're knocking on the door. But thank you for everybody being in here and watching tonight. So we're going to head on out of here and stay prepped up, prayed up, and strapped up. See you.